Hello, this is Anand Paul and welcome to Start Pro VHI Advanced Training Session. In the Advanced Training Session, we will deal with Advanced Analysis Topics of Seismic Analysis using UBC and IBC codes, calculating mode shapes, frequencies and participation factors, the response spectrum analysis, the time history analysis of a structure, the P-delta analysis and buckling load analysis of structures. In the first part of advanced analysis session, we will discuss equivalent lateral force analysis method as specified in IBC code. The equivalent lateral force analysis method is also called the static analysis method. The basic principle of this method is that when a building is subjected to an earthquake, it undergoes vibration. The weight of the structure when accelerated along the direction of the earthquake induce forces on the building. Normally, an elaborate dynamic analysis called time history analysis is required to solve the displacement, forces and the reactions resulting from the seismic activity. But the UBC and IBC provide a static method of solving those values. The StatPro Advanced Analysis Engine can be used to obtain these values by doing static analysis on structures. The equivalent lateral force analysis method can be generalized into three basic steps. In the step one, we will calculate the base shear. To calculate the base shear, we have to multiply a factor F with the seismic weight of the structure W. The seismic factor F is calculated by considering the importance factor of the building, the site class and the soil characteristics of the site. Whereas the W is the total vertical weight derived from the dead weight of the building and by adding a factor of imposed weights on the building. After calculating the base shear, it is then distributed over the height of the building as a series of nodal loads. The loaded building is then analyzed for these horizontal loads generated in step 2. Since this is an advanced topic, I hope everyone is comfortable with the fundamentals of StatPro like creating the geometry, assigning the properties and assigning support properties. In this example problem, we will be discussing a two-story steel structure with a span of 4 meter in x direction and 3 meter in z direction. The total height of the building is 6 meters and the flow height is 3 meters. I have assigned I section to columns and beams and angle sections to the bracings. The supports are fixed supports. The analysis step can be divided into three basic parts. The definition, the assignment and the printing of results. Before defining the load, we can set the number of primary load cases used in the problem. This will help StatPro to allocate memory and systematically organize analysis data for further use. To set the number of primary load cases, go to commands in miscellaneous commands set nl option we will be using five primary load cases so type in five and press enter if your structure is having any tension members you can specify the tension characteristics in the specification menu in the current structure the x bracings are tension only members to define them as tension members click on the specification tab in beam menu Select the tension command and click add. Now select the tension members, click assign to assign the members as tension only members. To get accurate results, it is necessary to define the flows as rigid diaphragms. To define a flow as a rigid diaphragm, STAT provides a command called slave command which can be found in the commands menu in master and slave specification. Click add to spell add a slave command. We will be using a ZX type slave command using node 2 as the master node or the reference node. Click add to accept the selection. Now we will select these nodes and assign save ZX command which will restrict the rotation and translation of these nodes and are constrained according to join to making them rigid diaphragms. Click assign to, to assign the command. Now let us move to the first part of the analysis procedure that is the load definition. To define the IBC load, click on the load and definition tab. 
go to definitions select seismic definitions and click add now from the drop down menu you can select IBC 2006 in the current example I am using the default zip code with an importance factor of 1 and response modification factor in X and Z direction as 4 so this is our load definition now click add now we have defined the F part of the equation in order to calculate the seismic weight we have to assign or provide stat pro the details about the seismic weight of our structure to assign seismic weight first of all we will be assigning the self weight as seismic weight with a self weight factor of 1 and click add if you want to double the seismic weight or if you want to double the self weight you can provide the factor 2 which will double the self weight of the structure for the calculation of seismic weight now for stat pro to consider the flow weights we can define the flow weights as uniform pressure loads specifying the y range of the load so for the first flow of the structure i will provide a uniformly distributed load of 3 kN per meter square with a y range of 1.5 meter to 3.5 meters and click add for the second floor let it be 2 kN per meter square and y range will be 3.5 meters to 6.5 meters click add to accept the selection so star pro can calculate the base shear value of the structure in order to assign these load to the structure we have to define load cases in both x and z directions apart from that we have to describe the gravity loads in the structure after that we will define the combinations for the structure for analysis to add a load case select the load case details click on add button let the load type be seismic click on add command close select the load case 1 and click on add command to pop up the load items menu select seismic load in x direction with a factor of 1 and a multiplying factor for accidental torsion moment 1 this is nothing but the eccentricity value with which the load has to be applied to the structure IBC code specify IBC code specifies an eccentricity an eccentricity an eccentricity factor of 5% in the direction perpendicular to the action of the load click on add command to accept the selection the ACC1 command signifies that the load will be applied with a 5 percentage eccentricity of 3 meters in either directions and the single load calculated will be subdivided into small nodal loads and nodal moments and it will be assigned to these nodes to obtain accurate results similarly we will add load case 2 for seismic load in z direction with a factor 1 and multiplying factor 1 click add command now our seismic loading for the structure is complete now we will describe the gravity loading on the structure and impose loading on the structure to define the impose load first of all we will define the self weight load with a factor of minus 1 in the direction of gravity click add to accept the selection will assign the self weight to the whole structure click yes to accept the assignment along with this we will add a flow load of intensity minus 3 kN per meter square for a y range of 1.5 meters to 3.5 meters in global y direction and a load of intensity minus 2 kN per meter square 
for second floor with a range of 3.5 meters to 6.5 meters. In order to obtain the combination of these cases and to ascertain the action of these loads simultaneously, we have to define a combination load, let it be load case 4. And this can be defined by using the repeat load command. So the first repeat command will be load case 1 with a factor of 1 and load case 3 with a factor of 1. And the load case 5 will be a repeating load with load case 2 with a factor of 1 and load case 3 with a factor of 1. Now the load assignment commands are complete. In order to obtain results from the analysis, we have to define and assign perform analysis command. To do this, click on the analysis tab. We have to perform analysis for each and every cases of loading. First of all, we will click on the load case 2 and click on the define command option. Select perform analysis and print load data option. Click on after current option and click add to add the command. After performing the analysis, we have to specify change command option. What change command option will do is that it will reset the stiffness matrix during the calculations. Since we have defined some members as tension only members, if any member is found to be compressive during the analysis, they will be neglected from the stiffness matrix. So in order to consider all the members in the next load case, we have to we have to specify the change command to reset the stiffness matrix. We'll define the, these two commands after load case 2. We'll do a static check for load case 3 in order to check the equilibrium and add change command. Similarly, we will do static check after the load case 4 and 5. The stat will now analyze the structure for all these five load cases. Now we have to request stat to print the results. Since load cases 1, 2 and 3 are senseless without the combination loads, we just have to look for the results in combination load cases 4 and 5. To specify post print commands, click on the post print tab, click on the define command. You can find a load list tab, select load cases 4 and 5. From this point forward, Stat Pro have to consider only load cases 4 and 5. We will print the joint displacements and the support reaction. Since we need to check forces in the truss members or the cross bracings, we can specify a command to print the member forces in the bracings. Select the bracing and go to commands tab, post analysis print, select member forces command. Select two selection option and press enter. The join displacement command and support reaction command is applicable to the whole structure. So we will select them and assign to the whole structure. Now our structure is ready to be analyzed. Let us check the output file. Stat Pro shows a warning about the flow one way slabs and the weight. This is because we have assigned the flow load distribution as one way load distribution. Since our structure is having a rectangular flow, the one way flow load distribution won't affect the correctness of the analysis. So this warning is more like a reminder for us to check or verify if our flow loads are correctly assigned to the structure. If you click the results tab, you can check the results of joint displacement support reaction list and member forces list. Thus we have completed static seismic analysis on a steel structure. In the next video, I'll explain how to read the results and verify the results obtained from the static analysis. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos and updates, subscribe to our channel Online Civil Digital.